Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel and welcome to the most expensive episode we've ever made. Not because of this large one inch Ingersoll Rand impact wrench at 650 bucks, but because we wanted to power this and tools like these to their fullest. Something we promised and owed you guys for some time now and haven't been able to do until today. So today we're going to put the top one inch air impact up against the largest and most powerful cordless impacts to see if these days they do stack up to the standard, rank it on our leaderboards, take it apart to see what these look like on the inside, then assemble our own custom abomination to be able to power it unclothed and use our high speed camera to see how it works in slow-mo. And well, yeah, cordless might not be such a bad idea for many because you see, we've been using the shop's 80 gallon air compressor with one inch and three quarter inch cast iron lines on the channel to feed air tools with three eighths or half inch air lines. And that seems to do the trick most of the time, but large air tools, well, even three quarter inch impacts and even with an 80 gallon tank, it couldn't keep up and the line size causes some heartbreaking levels of pressure loss under full throttle. So we could never test tools like these faithfully against their box specs. So first step was to put on order an air compressor and this took several months, but eventually we got delivery of our own 4,800 some odd dollar 120 gallon Emax quiet compressor, which is just about twice the physical size of our current shops compressor. Now, I, like many of you, I'm sure, have been around compressors, large and small, most of my entire life, and this one, even including screw compressors, might be my favorite yet. But to power it, it took a new panel, as the existing one was full and also needed to be upgraded, so including running lines and install, say, another nine grand on top of this big bird over here. Now, I'm in no way complaining here. I love this thing. Just starting to paint a picture for an important comparison coming up. Next was lines, fittings, and hoses. This was key. You see, there's no point in having a lot of CFM volume or capacity if you can't feed that without a massive pressure drop when under full throttle. So from the tank, it's only five feet of one inch NPT schedule 40. So about one in five sixteenths round. And that leads to a massive 180 CFM, 250 PSI max regulator with both one inch NPT in and out. Had bought one with a water separator first, but despite having one inch NPT in and out, it was necked down inside to about half of an inch, which seemed kind of pointless. And this one that we put a new large liquid fill gauge on did not have that problem. Getting rid of water is easy enough though. With a system like this, we just hooked up a drain to a remote switch. Works pretty well. And that regulator goes to one and a quarter inch stainless ball valves. And this is what I was mainly looking forward to, Chicago fittings. We've tested high flow fittings before, but these aren't even really like an air fitting in the normal way you'd think of one. They're basically a hallway with a gasket and each NPT size, quarter, three eighths, half inch, one inch, all use the same massively sized junction, which means they all interchange and have massive flow rates. It's a thing of beauty. They look a bit sketchy, but use retention clips and feel decent once they're pressurized. And then there's the compressor itself, which hums away, sounding very unimpressive as far as compressors go. But you can sort of have a conversation over it. Definitely quieter than any of the tools you'd use with it. And this is how loud it sounds over at the dyno. With 120 gallons of 180 PSI on tap, I think we're ready to go. In confession time, this is not Ingersoll Rand's largest one inch air impact or impact period, but we are comparing against the largest cordless, which is one inch. We'd plan to buy old trusty here, the IR285, but Ingersoll Rand's latest model is the 2850 Max, which is shorter, lighter, and rated for more torque. So how do you not just buy the one with the highest numbers? That's sort of our jam around here. So this is in fact around five pounds lighter and much shorter in the midsection and hammer cover than what we're used to seeing. Curious to see how it does versus this, the M18 one inch, 2868 as the air tool is rated for 2000 2100 foot pounds loosening and the milwaukee is 1900 2000 foot pounds loosening but also we'll be entering the ring here the highest rated and highest performing cordless impact in the world by our measure ingersoll ran but cordless this time sort of 40 volt with these side bag battery packs the w9691 rated for 2200 and 3000 loosening and from the same company, we'll have to see today how old school air with a, in our experience, more old school rating system stacks up against trendy cordless bolt and budget busting figures. And this model is about $1,100 bare because that's how we rank tools on our ranking for this size of impact. 
and the Milwaukee is about $800 bare to the Air Tools 650. But let's not forget what it took us to get to this point and the reason we've been keeping a tally. This $1,100 tool as a kit to be up and running is about $1,300. And this one is about $1,000 out the door to be doing some nut busting. And this one was about 14,000, 14,500 with the fittings, pipe, and hoses included, plus the tool, so close to around 15 grand. With that in mind, hopefully you watching this already own this type of stuff, or it's already at work with plenty of capacity if you're interested in one of these, then it's just 650 bucks. Let's see what that gets you. Our first test is called Working Torque, five seconds and forward. With a new thread stud installed in this extra large skid more all greased up, we should be getting like a gauge reading divided by 1.1 to get to foot pounds. This Milwaukee with an HD 12.0 should be making 890 foot pounds in this exact test. We're seeing 952 on the gauge. Yeah, that's divided by 1.07 to get there. So we'll be using 1.07 today and spot check that at times for consistency. 890 to beat so far. Here's the Ingersoll Rand 2850 max. Been waiting a few years to be able to say that. One thousand two hundred and twenty four. Yeah, that's a lot in person. It doesn't sound all that spicy in use hammering away. It's actually quieter than in free speed and holding this Arnold Schwarzenegger style. It'll definitely give your jingle a jangle for sure. But at seven hundred and seventy impacts per minute, it's the slowest hitting impact we've ever seen. So it's more of a shake than a rattle and roll. And if you underfeed it, here's the running pressure of the tool dropping to 90 PSI as measured at the wall rather than at the tool. It's definitely not as happy. 1,024 foot pounds here, even with the short hose, definitely make sure you're giving it more than 90 PSI registered at the wall in order for it to be at spec at the tool while under full throttle. 1224 though, that's up there. Enough in fact to also not just take on, but so far, beat the most expensive, highest rated cordless impact wrench in the world, the IR with batteries, which is rated around 10% higher than this air tool in this direction. Good stuff in making this 1224 a new channel record of any tool type in this test. Let's head over to max torque, our 10 second test, then we'll do some good old fashioned work safe nut bust. Here's the 2850 max once again, up against the top two cordless contenders. Fourteen hundred and sixty-eight. Another channel record, but that cordless IR—it's really catching up now. This is sort of the opposite of the type of dyno curve we expected to see. I figured even if the air tool came out on top, the cordless might win in a shorter test, or at least come out of the hole a lot faster. With eleven hundred and seventy IPM hitting more than one and a half times faster, with the big lazy hits of an air gun like this probably making stuff happen at the top where things are nice and tight. Very interesting to see the opposite here, I think. But also not the main attraction according to most cordless tools. Nut busting or bolt breakaway, which I think I prefer as a term if I had to choose. The M18's coming in with 2,000 foot-pounds, the IR air gun 2,100 foot-pounds, and the IR cordless, according to them, 3,000 foot-pounds. Let's see if that holds true. This extra large setup doesn't precisely measure reverse like our smaller one can, so we do some good old-fashioned removal dyno runs head-to-head. -head. We have the data on the two cordless boys, so let's add some Industrial Revolution era air power into the mix. Here's removing around 1,650 to 1,700 foot-pounds, dyno graphs each representative. Pretty impressive for the cordless IR here. The air tool finishes nearly one second earlier total, but also started a little bit lower by chance. You might have to hand it to the cordless there or call that close enough for a tie. Pretty amazing with two fairly simple 2P configured 18650 batteries, which might also be its downfall. Let's see in our final best case scenario test. Battery right off the charger. The M18 now gets a battery it didn't come kitted with, the Forge, which it happens to like a little bit better. The air gun gets 150 PSI static line pressure as usual. That drops under full throttle, but is not untypical to find in many shops. And the IR cordless, well, they don't make any more powerful batteries, so it's just gonna give it its all. Here's the 2850 taking those on.
1,886. Yeah, once again, a new overall channel record. It likes a bit more air pressure, and while there may not be any spicier battery options for one, or spend some more cash to bump up the other, walking over to the wall regulator and turning it up when you're on something not wanting to come off, that's mostly free when available to you and pretty nice. If for a second ignoring all that it entails to keep it fed, impressive stuff and where we sort of figured the top was an air 1 inch impacts today based on all accounts. So let's take this thing apart to see its insides, find ourselves lucky enough to be able to get some high speed shots stripped away, rank this guy in our leaderboards and let you know what we think about all of this. And this is where we find out how IR made this tool smaller, lighter, and more powerful at the same time. Holding this together is just four bolts out front instead of the traditional eight sandwiching the middle. And besides some very high quality feeling gaskets, what you'll find inside is a large air motor, but maybe not as deep or long an air rotor as traditional one inch impacts usually use. And plastic rotor blades, which depending on the application can actually last longer than phenolic resin, so no problem here. Then out front at the hammer assembly is the real surprise. Besides not finding as much grease as I expected, and I guess I didn't research this tool very much, just bought the top specs blindly as usual. This is actually a twin hammer, not your typical rocking dog mechanism, which means a few things. For one, it's much more modern. Your top half inch air impacts these days are all likely using twin hammer mechanisms, like 25% the size and weight of this one. I actually didn't know brands were using these in full size one inch impacts nowadays. And two, your typical rocking dog clutch design is an enclosed steel cage design. You can't see anything inside one of those while it's operating. So we can see a massive hammer mechanism at work in slow-mo now because of this design. Seems fitting to take the most expensive episode we've ever made and add the single priciest piece of equipment we've ever bought to double down on things. This was a bit rednecky, but we used some nuts to tighten down half the impact gun assembly together, just the motor side so it can sort of run independent. <coughs> then spline that side into the twin hammer assembly and <coughs> Away we go. With a line painted on one side of the hammers, this will give you a supersized example of how an air impact works. And it's hitting infrequently enough that we can shoot this in 2K. Air impacts are fast spinning tools. An equivalent cordless tool might have a fast brushless motor, but after a gear reduction to be able to run the hammer up front, it's often four or five, six times slower in RPM. And that's the case in one inch impacts as well, but cordless hits every 180 degrees, so twice as often per rotation. This whole mass only hits once every 360, imparting with it more momentum and potential energy along with it to pair with this large spinning assembly. The hammers both hit at the same time on opposite sides of the drive anvil dogs. Recoiling causes those hammers to pop into a free rotating position, which is often why these mechanisms are called clutches. Then as it rotates around the hammer, they're ramped back up into position to interfere with the dog and impact once again. It's a fairly simple design actually, just blown way up to scale of a tool this size, and one we didn't expect to be able to film, so I think it's pretty neat. Onto the rankings here on our large impact wrench leaderboard, starting below the two cordless for now, its test runs are turned into points as a full 122, 147, and 189 points. Dang. On this ranking, we assume you have the space to run one of these tools, but the main thing you have to contend with is weight on these guys. So at 22 pounds, this comes in under the cordless, which is welcome holding one of these. This includes a couple pounds for the few feet of hose you'll be supporting as well, and all of these are using the weights of the short anvil version of the tool to not penalize or award one versus the other for simple anvil length differences. 66.7 points, which is like middle of the road on this ranking, but tops among one inch drive. It claims 2,000 foot-pounds in the measuring direction today, we saw as much as 94% of that. That's very good. As a function of the bare tool cost, like the rest of these, that also earns 43.5 points, totaling 662.2, getting mighty close to what we estimated might be the max theoretical score on this ranking. That's pretty sweet. That, of course, requires, like batteries and chargers for these, you know, a simple 120 gallon plus compressor, not overly long, three quarter inch airlines, Chicago fittings, one inch NPT in and out regulator that won't choke that down, and the ability to mess with the regulator when you want more beans. So if that describes where you work or your shop or your farm, yeah, get one. I love it. It's not going anywhere. Heck, now I'm curious about the cheap ones I've seen at Harbor Freight and online as well. But it also really underlines how far cordless has come. Has it surpassed air like some of the specs would imply? Well, pretty close to it, but I think on the whole, maybe no. 
Cordless has a little ways to go to unseat the king that is air one inch impacts right now. Excited for brands like Makita XGT and what they might offer. But at $1,000, $1,300, whatever it may be, for a lot of folks, even for a second ignoring that they can be used anywhere, it's actually a much cheaper barrier for entry into this level of power, at least compared to spending 14 to 15 grand like we did. Let us know what else you'd like to see us test with this, and thank you more than ever for watching.